everybody. It is Thursday, March 21st, 2024. Welcome to the only show about Spartan Dogs, hosted by Spartan Dogs. This is Spartan. This is Sparta MSU. What's up? I'm your host, Jason Strayhorn, along with my co-host, Cedric Swervin Irvin. Oh, oh, oh. Big day today. Big day for the green and white. I know y'all been watching that, so we're going to get all into that. If this is your first time watching the show, we want to welcome you to the show. If this is not, y'all know what time it is. Hey, get in that chat. That's where the party's at. Everybody's going to be talking in there. We are here live and in color with you guys right here tonight on Thursday before we head into round of 32 for basketball. But we're going to get into that in a minute. But look, don't forget, to, if you want to get some 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 gear, because you got, you're going out to North Carolina to face North Carolina. Michigan State's going to be doing that here in the next couple of days. Go on over to thisispartamsu.com. Type in the code Merch Madness and get 20% off our orders over $50. That's a good deal now. So, so you get some swag. And there's a whole lot of new basketball attire in there. Head over to thisispartamsu.com for all of that good stuff. And, hey, let us know where you're watching from. Woody. Man, look, Woody has set a record from Hawaii. Woody from Hawaii. He was in the chat. Somewhere around 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So congratulations, Woody, from Hawaii. I don't think anybody can beat that five hours before a tip-off. I mean, Swerve, what you think? Oh, man, what is what you call committed? He's committed to the green and white, baby, like I was the day at 12.15. I was hyped straight. Oh, yeah? Oh, man, we was up 20 to 8. We was doing our thing. Oh, it was – I was feeling it, baby. Come on. <laughs> what up though? Hey, they was they was they, hey that team. We're gonna talk right about that team right now. Let's talk about Michigan State basketball. I mean, they did it today out in North Carolina against the other MSU, Mississippi State Bulldogs. We got some interesting tidbits about them in history, but they knocked them off today. 69 to 51. Man, Walker Akins, everybody was in the mix today. 73 NCAA tournament wins, good for six all-time for Michigan State. Mm. It's great. The thing about that game, man, I was watching, man, we we, we was 43% from the three-point line, and then we was another 83% from the free throw as a team, and we outdid those boys. The, 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 the country boys ain't stand a chance against the Midwest. Yeah, they didn't. Why was that? It looked like they was overmatching every aspect of the game, didn't it? Hey, I told you, this is old time, baby. It is old time. It is old, man. I mean, look, they, they led, it looked like from start to finish when you look right. think about it. Uh, Michigan State was ahead. Tyson Walker had 19 points. He led all Spartans. And, but, man, Jay Nakins, I mean, Jay went off today, man. I mean, he had 15, seven rebounds. And, but, man, it seemed like he hit about 35 three-pointers. I, I don't know how 35 three-pointers equals 15 points, but, man, it just seemed that way. When you look at what graduate forward Malik Hall also threw in 10 and had five boards. But, Swear, let, let's let's look at what Jay Nakins was able to do. Do we have some video of that? Three-point line will be a key here today as Aikens gets up the first shot. And Aikens, he's been in a shooting slump, Jim, but he was cooking last year in the terms of the turnover. Hubbard almost got that one. Here's Aikens in the corner. He comes up short. Aikens gets it back. A little mid-range jumper is good. No hesitation for Jaden Aikens. That size and length to keep Michigan State perimeter oriented. You just can't let a deep pass or dribble penetration break you down. Hogard once again looking to drive. Cut off in the corner. Aikens for three. And another three-point basket set up. So got a little extra motivation right there. Get patience inside for him right there. There's another steal. Hubbard out. Matthews the steal. Hubbard. Oh, oh. He's denied. Jaden Aiken. Gives it back to Hogard. Michigan State gets it organized. Jaden Aiken to the baseline pull up. Cole was right there. But Tony Smith went right through the chest of Jackson Cole. Watch yourself. Watch yourself. Okay, Jaden Aiken. Flying high defensively. Lost the handle on the rebound. Hands active once again for Michigan State. In the corner, three-pointer is good for Jaden Akins. He's having a game here in round one. 
Swerve, I mean, my goodness, oh, man. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, oh. Hey, hey, oh, you see that two handed dunk, though? Oh, oh my. like me, eighth grade on eighth feet. <laughs> <laughs> But you oh, know who remind me of? Straight. Who? Left handed, who we remind you of? Who? Mo Pete? Woo! <laughs> from the Mo Pete from the corner, baby. Right, right. He just ain't six seven, but my goodness, boy, he did. That did remind me of Mo Pete. Jay Nakins out of Farmington. Hey, that boy is something else. I'm telling you. He's streaky, he's athletic, but my goodness, he was hot today. And that's what we needed. Going to it was it eighteen point win? I mean, jeez, uh, eighteen points against some boys from the SEC. Look, man, I mean, Michigan State improved to twenty and fourteen. Mississippi State closed out a season of twenty one and fourteen. So we got the 20, 20 wins now. So like thinking about that, man, if you look at that performance by Michigan State, it, it seemed like from the beginnings where they was ready to go, man. It seemed like Mighty Sissoko was a guy who, you know, sometimes can be a little shaky under the rim, but he was going up with authority. If they play like that, what do you think about their chances going forward? Hey, it's, it's just like what uh, Special K said. You know, outside the Big Ten, he, he, he like our chances. And I mm. like our chances, too, because they don't they, they don't know nothing about Izzo. They just read about Izzo, you know. <laughs> but now they're going to call Mississippi State and ask about Izzo. You know, Izzo going to have them guys ready, man. We can play like that and shoot. 40 plus, 40 plus percent from the from the three point and, and and win the battle, rebound battle, and win the free throw battle. Come on, man! Look, <laughs> it's a sweet sixteen after that, baby. <laughs> yeah. yeah, baby. I mean, what what they talking about? Some of Steve's been talking about tell you to spit the gum out, man. What? Hey, man, look, you can't tell the man. That's cool. I'll do it for Steve. I'll do it for Steve. Yes, I'll, do it. I'll do it. My bad, Steve. That's not, that's not podcast etiquette. I'm sorry. You're right. It's my see, fault. see that? See that? We listen to y'all. We listen. He laughing about it. But man, they got to have them shades back in action, baby. Oh, that's what we talking about. Come on, baby. Look at me. I'm good. <laughs> you should have saw me at 12 15. I was the loud, loudest one in the restaurant. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, oh, me too. Man. Me too. There ain't no, it's, it ain't no other Spartans there. I made everybody Spartan fans in the house down here. Had to. You got to. Hey, hey man, ain't nothing wrong with that. You like what the special case said though about their chances because they don't know Izzo. Everybody says that. I think I just saw Rolanda. She said January, February. Izzo. Is that what she said right there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Miss Price, it is no time. Like I say, them, them, them guys play hard, man. We played the whole. I, I was just excited, man. I was excited. I just, I, I know I'm, I'm not a betting guy, but I should have bet the whole mortgage on it. <laughs> I know, I know. That's a hard one to bet, but hey, when you look at how intense they were, Izzo was on fire. The team seemed to take on that energy. They all look like a bunch of teens out there, man. But let's, you know, it started off a little scary for me. I ain't gonna. I ain't going to hold you up. It was a little scary when I saw A.J. Hogar come out with his pants on backwards. We have that show, a video of that? Oh, come on. Uh, you know, that, that was all. It was floating everywhere. He had the, he had the pants on backwards, man. How, how does that happen, Swerve? You know, it, it all depends what kind of music he was listening to in his headphones during pregame. You know, it's new generation, straight. <laughs> what, it's, it's new generation. That music that they listening to sometimes it, it gonna make you forget something, right? So I don't know if he I would I I want to say he went back to Chris Cross or you know he wanted to try something. Yeah, but you know what? We got the victory. Now we wouldn't have had the victory. You'd have had to mute me on here every time we just showed and said his name. <laughs> hey. We want him to wear a pants backwards every game from now on in the tournament if they play like that. It I'll don't matter. It. I'll, I'll take, take it. it. I'll uh, take Trevor, it. Trevor, Trevor right here. Trevor puts up something. A.J. Hogarth had eight assists and passed Eric Snow. And now over 600 assists with 605 and only one of five MSU players with over 600 assists. I mean, listen, that's that's an info material. Trevor needs a job. He's got one. How about I call that? him T double, and I ain't talking about Trick Daddy neither. <laughs> T, appreciate the info, brother. Appreciate it, man. 
Hey, look, good job, AJ. City boys are definitely up, Cat. You know, that's what's going on out here, man. Like, MSU basketball, it was on fire. You look at – look, everybody got in the game, too. That's the thing. You can't – you know, look, when you when, when you saw Steven Izzo checking in, you what time you thought it was? Did you, did you know? Did you have a hey, – Hey, listen, listen. <laughs> I had a coach say, when you win, it's enough for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's enough for, <laughs> what they say what, what were they talking about swerve exactly thank you hey, look the collection plates out again praise where y'all been on the tear MSG, uh, uh, this is why man she was killing i love it go green steve go steve, white go white baby Dang, man green and white go green go white well i'm at no green go white let's go <laughs> I mean, everybody's so excited about this. You know, what I wonder what people are thinking about that. Like, where was not only let's get back to Stephen Izzo for a minute. So Stephen Izzo got in, like you said, you know, so it's enough for everybody. And then Steve Smith, his son Davis, comes in the game and pops that long three with twenty. Long three, like he meant to do it. Yeah, he did. Right. I mean. How you how you do that? Like, who is this? Here you go, Daddy Warbuck spending a rumor Aruba money. Everybody's talking about Steve Smith, but no, we talking about the other Steve Smith, the the one that played at MSU, Hooper. His right. son Davis is the one who hit that deep three. What you think about that? Hey, like I told you, when when you win, it's enough for everybody. Everybody get a chance and an opportunity. Anytime you get to see Lil Is in the game, you know we up, we doing some good. All right, and them guys got a chance to shine. If it was me too, in them last little minutes, I'm t I'm shooting the ball every time I get it. <laughs> Steven got to be on assist. TV, I'm on TV. I got to do something. Oh yeah, Steven Izzo got the assist on that three. For right. Smith. Stats and info with that one in the back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, so I mean, man, look, that's one of them. Uh, you want to bottle up that performance from Michigan State basketball and see if they can hold on to that. You know, they got to. You know, relax tonight and then get ready. Was, the game was on Saturday, right? Right. Oh man, hey. You know, but one thing about that, you you, you can build off of, it. and then you playing in North Carolina too. That just got history, just like we do too. And um, you know, it, it's it's one of those. You know, when you get together tonight with the guys, you tell you telling each other, hey, we're gonna play our best game on Saturday. You know, more there's no more tomorrow. We don't want to feel like Mississippi State is feeling right now. You know what I mean? The only way we can go out there is control what we can control, all right, and, and play our ass off and, and get a win and go on to the next round. So, like I say, I believe in Izzo. I'll be right down the TV. Yeah. <laughs> we all believe in Izzo. Do we have a clip from the three-pointer from Davis? Oh, boy. Let's see here. Let's see. Court that kind of brought everything in back into play. Level things out. Uh -oh. <laughs> Shoot it. Little Smitty's gonna let it fly just like his. Oh, 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 that was deep. Green. That's from the logo. That was from way back. It was a little choppy, but that's all right. But he walked back too cool, though. So I would have walked back like this here. It did all <laughs> there. I would have did a little, little step <laughs> Shimmy, and everything. Hey, you got it. You got it. You know, oh, what do the kids do? Tapping they <laughs> Go high five the whole yeah, audience. You would have had to call time out to take me out. They'd have got, they'd have got the first celebration uh, foul. Right. <laughs> hey, swear you would have took your shirt off, your everything, you know. <laughs> Back deep. Straight high DP in that three. Oh, man. <laughs> Hey, just run into the tunnel and never come back. Right. Never that come back. Not shit. <laughs> <laughs> he did it like, okay, yeah, I've been here before. No, not me. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know the legend uh, of Deion Sanders, right? He supposed to ran the 40, went into the tunnel, and then never came back, got in a limo. That's one on, of those man. moments right Come there. on. Come on. Yeah, especially if you could do that in the final four. I don't know, man. <laughs> hey, they looking awful good, man. I, hey, look. Michigan State basketball, man. I, I mean, oh, I, I, our producer, Sean, earlier today, we were talking to him, man. He just – he couldn't contain himself, man. I don't know if everybody gets like that before Michigan State games come on where they just can't even think straight anymore. 
when you get within that 30 minute window of tip off, do more people get like that? Uh, you know, you know, it's all about what's in their red cup. Oh, is that it? That's what it is. Okay, because you know it's just some right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that red cup. Who? What? Hey, what's everybody drinking today? By the way. I mean, it's a celebratory time right now in East Lansing for the green and white. You know, we need to know. <laughs> Steve Smith, he said it right there. Producer Sean, is this true? Sean was probably on that oil already. At yes, 12 15, you, you're talking about 11.45 in the morning. Sean get a little nervous, get a little upbeat, which I can understand because when you doubt, you can't have doubt. See, I was ready to go because I didn't doubt. I, I believe in Izzo. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I was ready to go, good. baby. <laughs> you wasn't scared at all? Oh, no. Not of them country boys. No. No, you can't. You can't be afraid of it, man. No. Not of them like... country boys down South Mississippi. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> the country boy. Yeah, speaking of, maybe we're going to talk a little bit about them country boys. Man, be, before we get it, I want to talk a little bit about some football. Something came up a couple of days ago where Coach K, you know, the old Duke coach, Mike Krzyzewski, he made some comments about what Nick Saban had said. You know, this is a little basketball related, but we're talking about NIL and new transfer portal stuff that's going on. Do we have that video so people can see what Coach K said? I didn't retire because – of the new environment in college sports. Uh, uh, it would have been exciting to try to adapt to that because you, you know, during my 40, 50 years, you, you have to keep adapting. This is the biggest adaptation, uh, I think, in the history of college athletics. And, uh, uh, I, and it's, not, uh, it's not been coordinated. You know, we don't have a leader. Uh, we don't even know who to call into a meeting to discuss what needs to be discussed. This has been three years now, Dan. Uh, it, the, it, it shows the state of the NCAA three years ago and the fact that it's, it, it has not been able to do a damn thing uh, in these three years. And instead of complaining about what it is, just accept the fact that this is a new time. And uh, just because it isn't like the old doesn't mean it's not okay. This is what it is. And we should figure out how to do what it is uh, in the best interest of everyone. And uh, I think it's an exciting time if you had leadership and an, and an organization uh, to put your arms around it. Mm. Now, deep words right there. From Coach K, what you think? Was that first of all? First of all, I feel like he was taking a shot at Jesus. You know, they, Jesus down there in Tuscaloosa, well, he really in Jupiter, Florida, right now in his seventeen million dollar mansion. You know, uh, <laughs> you know uh, they, that all he was saying. You know, he basically telling Save, you know, at this time you got to adapt. You know, you got to switch. But he, I also read in those comments when that when that video came about, they were saying someone wrote, "Say, hey, Coach K." You only have to deal with those kids for one year because everybody, all your top kids come in, they won and done. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Good point. But it wasn't just that. Saban also, they had a quote also from Miss Saban. You know what I mean? So I guess, you know, like for, for, for Nick Saban, what he was saying is, you know, Nick Saban won't control. You know, he want he to build you up. He want he to build your character up. He want to change you from a young man to a man. He want to put his hands on you. But these kids nowadays are saying, I'm going where the money at. Mm -hmm. You know, I want the money first. You know, that's 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 the whole thing. Cause think about it, and I always tell people this: University of Miami went six and seven last year, or five and seven, or something like that, mm -hmm. and still had the top four recruiting class in the country. So kids not thinking about, oh, I want to go to a top five, top ten school. They going out and saying, who gonna give me the most nil money? Mm -hmm. It's no way. University of Miami should have been in the top five, but they're in the top five because their NIL is on the top. That's a good point. I mean, they really are. It, it's not, it, it, 
the rules the way that they are right now have established a new paradigm in college athletics. This is what it is. And I think what Coach K was saying is that we're not changing that. They may try to do something about putting some guardrails, as like people like to say about it, and try to limit players from transferring back and forth. I mean, as you saw, there's a player from Alabama who just transferred a couple of weeks ago, and now he's transferring back, talking about Caden Proctor, big offensive lineman, who's gone from Bama to Iowa back to Bama, like within, I don't know, 90 days, which is incredible to me. You know, those types of things maybe need to, you know, that, that, that stuff – shouldn't happen as easy and readily as it is right now. But I don't see there being any moment where they're going to restrict the players from getting paid. I mean, Swerve, you know it as well as I do, and I'm sure our next guest can talk about it in more detail. Like going all the way back to I don't know, the 60s, right? The guy, those guys, Some of those guys probably feel like we should have been paid. If we had Bubba Smith, we could get Bubba on the show. He'd say I should be getting paid, right? Yeah, but Bubba need to get paid because I heard he ain't eat. He, when he was making Police Academy, he still had outstanding tickets from Michigan State. Oh, man. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> High yeah, time. I know when he told me that story. He said, man, until this day, right now, I still got outstanding parking tickets. I'm not going to pay it. I'm like, you did Police Academy one, two, three, four, five, and six. <laughs> High Tower had tickets. The DPS is undefeated in East Lansing. We got to fix oh, that. Man. Hey, that should be the NIL deal. There should be a big pot to help pay some of those tickets off. Oh, man. When he told me that straight in 96, man, I couldn't do nothing but laugh. I'm like, you made oh, all the movies. What's up, brother? Yeah. I'm still, I'm still not going to pay it. Right. <laughs> Who am I to tell you to pay it? Right. Yeah. Hey, Bubba, Bubba does what Bubba does and what he wants to do. You know, but for right now, look, Spartan fans, it's time to talk a little bit about NIL. So you want to make your NIL charitable gift charitable? It's time to take control of your NIL contributions and direct them to the Spartan Athletic Programs of your choice. The This is Sparta Fund, powered by Charitable Gift America, allows you to choose which sport you want to support with your NIL donations. All donations to the fund are tax deductible, and all CGA athletes donate 5% of their contract to charitable organizations of their choice. Make a difference in this world. Go to cgaathletics.org. Swerve, that's a big one right there. And don't forget, everyone, to click the like and subscribe buttons. We need that. It doesn't cost you a thing, okay? It helps us a whole lot. Please do it for Swerve. Click it. Click, 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 click. We need right that. At the bottom. And don't forget to follow us on all of our social media platforms at This is Sparta MSU. Look. We'll be back in a moment. We got to talk about a legend and some serious situations that happened in the past. We talked about them country boys from Mississippi State. We're going to talk about that and some historical references behind that after these messages from our friends over at IHOP. IHOP. IHOP has tons of omelets, so you can have omelets for breakfast, brunch, dinner, or even a brittle of the night snack. Try the new meaty, cheesy, and crispy mega omelet and add cinnamon dippers for a dollar. Only at IHOP. Well, Swerve, man. Like, there's a thing that happened. You know, there's back in, I think it was 1963, okay? Michigan State hosted one of these tournament games. In the second round, Michigan State hosted Mississippi versus Loyola in what's called a game of change, right? This was a serious event that happened back then because – as you said, the country boys from down in Mississippi, they, they look, the unthinkable occurred in East Lansing. This is back in March 15, 1963, just a few weeks ago, during the middle of the civil rights movement in the second round of the tournament. Mississippi State had an all-white team was scheduled to play Loyola, who had an integrated team with four black starters, except there was a little a slight issue. There was an unwritten law that teams from Mississippi could not play against black players. So when the school president and dean announced that he was sending the players to the tournament, a lot of people complained. Governors tried to get involved and, and, and stop the team from flying to East Lansing. I think we have a little video to kind of cover this and show in our next guest as well. The game of change in 1963 between Mississippi State and Loyola is one of the three most important basketball games ever played. In 1963, Mississippi State had won successive Southeastern Conference championships 
and had not been allowed to play in the NCAA tournament because they couldn't play against black players. He had a bunch of white players in Mississippi that went against their president, their AD, and their governor and said, no, no, we're playing the game, we're going up there. And I think he had some black players from Leola that accepted that and appreciated that. They didn't know if they were going to be arrested. They didn't know what was going to happen. There was an injunction against them leaving. The governor, Ross Barnett, was adamant that they couldn't do this. And they defied all of those orders and came up here to play what was became known as the game of change. Look, right now, look, this is a serious topic, and, and we got to get educated and do that. I swear, we had to bring on a guy who's a three-time Michigan Sports Writer of the Year. Is a 2006 inductee into the Greater Lansing Area Sports Hall of Fame. I mean, he's written all kinds of books, man. Heart of a Spartan, the story of Michigan State football renaissance, which was just his seventh book following Spartan Champions, Judd, A Magical Journey, Magic Moments, Green and Glory, Tales from Detroit Tigers Dugout, Volumes 1 and 2. Hey, man, he's just from Redford down the road there, you know, Redford Township native. Look, he's currently – doing all kinds of things, and you can catch him on the drive with Jack at all times, and you can catch Swerve and Stray on there, you know, as we love to spend time with the one, the only, the great Jack Evelyn, who joins the Sparta. <laughs> Gentlemen, <laughs> Jason, hey, the greatest moment in my career was covering Swerve. <laughs> <laughs> Say it again, Jack. Had to be. Had to be. Again, you know, the three Please of us, we, we could go to Ohio Stadium right now and reenact that game in November of 98, right? right? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know, Swerve, I'm listening to Jason talk about NIL. I think he's pissed off that centers don't get more NIL. Man, I'm telling you, man. They don't hey. get no love. But straight you know, in the, straight in need NIL though. He 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 already no. had a good nice bank account in high in college anyway. No. no. Hey Jack, in that video, you kind of look like Steven Seagal, brother. <laughs> Well, that clip you showed was a few years ago when you talked about what happened in 63. I don't know if you meant 1863 or 1963. <laughs> you I'm glad you're talking about that because, yeah. guys, seriously, that's one of the three most important basketball games in NCAA history. And it wasn't a championship game, but it was a game that set up what Texas Western did against Kentucky three years later. And you're absolutely right about those guys from Mississippi State. And the coach uh, told them before the season started, hey, you guys win it again. We're going to get there. We have to go to different states. And that's exactly what they did. And then they met up here, and there was a famous handshake before the game, a black player and a white player. And this is only 60, 61 years ago. This isn't that long ago. But – it was one of the monumental events, and uh, Mississippi State coach Babe McCarthy said after the game, hey, uh, no matter what color they were, they were the best team we've seen. And they went on and won the championship. Ain't no bulls. <laughs> yeah. The only team from the state of Illinois ever to win an NCAA basketball championship, Loyola, 1963. Wow. In that in that format, I think we have a picture of that handshake, that famous handshake that happened in Jenison Fieldhouse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there it is. There you go. Yeah. I mean, That's can you Jerry miss? Harkness on the right? He was Loyola's All American and uh, Captain uh, Joe Dan Gold from Mississippi State, and uh, it was a absolutely jammed Jenison Fieldhouse. You don't think of Jenison hosting an NCAA tournament. But uh, that was an event that had the public's imagination. Bowling Green and Illinois were also there. They were the other teams, and uh, Loyola went on and beat uh, Illinois the next night for the regional championship. Oh, man. I mean, that's interesting. Not Because did I think they had a game that kind of – that was a uh, uh, a memorial yeah. game yeah. in the 50-year anniversary yes. of it, right? Yes, yes. And yes. – yes. Athletic director Mark Hollis kind of had a statue uh, outside. Of There's Jenison. a plaque now outside of Jenison commemorating yes. this. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Swerve, you know the story about Michigan State and integration. And there was a time when players from the South could not play uh, down there. They couldn't play at a major school. Uh, and Duffy was one of the guys who changed that. And those teams in the, the 60s, it isn't just that they were – 
great. They went 19-1-1. One and one. It's what they did to change the attitudes. And I remember a story with Duffy guys when he went over to one of his best friend's houses for a party before the season. And a uh, guy said to him, hey, Duff, you know, uh, you're playing too many of them. And Duffy wow. looked at him and said, too many of them? What do you mean them? He said, you know. And he said, no, I don't know. What are you saying? And the guy says, well, you, you can't play that many colored guys here or anywhere else. And Duffy said, I can, I will, and this party is over. Damn right. That's right. Duff. Yeah. <laughs> and he went on to win a couple of national titles behind yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, good for Duffy. Duffy Daughtery, the legend. I, you know, this this particular article was written uh, with Spartans Illustrated, guest writer for Kevin Thomas, which, uh, I mean, did a phenomenal job pointing yeah. out a lot of these things, yeah. uh, these historical facts that happened. But so there was actually players that were sent to Nashville. Is that what yeah. happened? Yeah. Like, yeah, Coach how- went in one direction, players went in another direction, and the, the most interesting part was the governor, Ross Barnett, who was one of the biggest bigots uh, ever to be a governor of any state, and he came out with this injunction that they were going to arrest everybody if they tried to leave the state, so they said, oh yeah, well you try to catch us, and so then uh, he got a hold of the police chief, and he told him what was happening. And the police chief was kind of a progressive guy, and he waited and waited, and and then I think he went to the wrong airport by del- you know deliberately, and so the players were able to get out, and then they all had a rendezvous and they played the game. Oh my goodness, Swerve! What would you have done if you was on that team? But how, how you know? Because I know Swerve talks about this a lot, like you know. But imagine living in those times. Said, listen. I don't think I would have made it to the court though, uh, straight. <laughs> I would have made it to the court. That was I was too. Ah, but I love to hear the ending of them stories like that, man. Yeah. It just, it just it's funny because when I first got to Alabama, the coach, and I met this old guy, man. He was telling me uh, how how that how that happened in Alabama. I think Alabama played USC or something like that, and and somebody at USC said, uh, I think Alabama beat USC. And because they had a couple, you know, they had some some black, some black, some black football players, and USC didn't, or vice versa. I think it was Alabama. And then the coach at USC said, "You know what? I'm going to get me some of those." <laughs> <laughs> well, Michigan State had showed them how to do it, and there were some other schools who followed close behind. But guys, when they had the '66 game of the century, Michigan State and Notre yeah. Dame in the 10-10 tie, and Michigan State had four black players who were drafted in the top eight in the next NFL draft. They were drafted number one, number two, number five, and number eight, and Notre Dame only had one black player. On the whole team. Alan Page, he was a good one, but they had one. Just one. Alan Page from Minnesota Vikings, Hall of Famer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, great player. Now, didn't Michigan have a situation? I think Gerald Ford, I mean, this is going back into those days when he played center for the Wolverines. Didn't Georgia Tech choose to not play them because they had a black player on the team? And then Michigan told the black player to sit on the sideline? Yeah. Am I, is that, yeah. Are my facts right? Yeah. Yes. And there have been situations where different teams, incidents, bowl games, uh, having to stay at different hotels or – uh, couldn't dress with them. lots of those kinds of things, but uh, Michigan State's commitment to this, Swerve, you you understand how important that is for a team, for everyone to be together. I mean, if you're going to play together, you're going to fight together, then you ought to be able to be treated the same. And uh, that was important to Michigan State from the get-go. When Michigan State became known, back when it was still Michigan State College, mm-hmm. Biggie Munn brought black players in from Flint to win their 28 straight games, to win the first Rose Bowl the year that they were inducted into the Big Ten. And Duffy took over from there. And then once they got into the late 50s and 60s, it got bigger and they weren't stacking. You see a lot of schools would take their black athletes and just put them at three or four positions. 
Michigan State didn't do that. And then Jimmy Ray became the first black quarterback mm, yeah. from the South to lead a team to a national championship. Yeah. From North Carolina. From North Carolina. Exactly. Yeah. Jimmy Ray, man, he's something else. Now, look, there's somebody in the chat, Laura, that says Sister Jean at Loyola now was a force in the civil rights movement. Uh, I can believe that. And then Trevor says Sister Jean is 104 years old and supposedly filled out a breath. Is she 104 years old? Seriously. Listen, Jean. Sister she, she Jean. She's 104. She's close to it. She's <laughs> older she than I am, so she's old. She better <laughs> took Michigan State today. I know that. <laughs> God, her bracket is finished. Her bracket is finished. I know that uh, Drew Valentine, who is now the coach at Loyola, yes. uh, has spent time with Sister Jean, and she's the biggest Loyola fan you'll ever find. She's a big Drew Valentine fan, but when Tom Izzo retires, Michigan State might have to go and take Drew away from her. Is that Everybody what you think? Out there hey, talk Sister to us about Jean. that. Tell Sister Jean I need to see her bracket tomorrow. Tell <laughs> <laughs> big Michigan State. Hey, guys, you know, ESPN uh, has celebrity brackets. Yeah. And uh, Big Sean, right? You know Big yeah, Sean the rapper? Sure. Yeah. He's the only one who picked Michigan State all the way through, winning every game, and being the, the lowest seed ever to win an NCAA title. Never been a, a team lower than eight that is one, and the Spartans are a nine. Big Sean picked the Spartans and win the whole thing. Whole thing. Okay, Big Sean. Uh, Big Sean. Okay, okay. I hope okay. you know. Something. I don't. You. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Big Sean's a good. Hey, we like his music. We love Big Sean around yeah. here. You know, we got to show him love. Can we do a little concert with Big Sean in Spartan Stadium or something? I think <laughs> that's coming up. <laughs> they win the championship. It's time to bring him in all day long in the break. Jack, now that now we're talking about Spartan Stadium, yeah. And I know if anybody knows, you knows. What do you think about the new head coach? What do you think about the the, the vibe, the scenery that's there? The what? Tell me something before I buy this ticket to come up there. <laughs> you know, uh, Jason, I was thinking about this. The only thing that's missing is Swerve back here. That's true. Yeah. Uh, That's but the only thing. Swerve, I think when you get to know him, you're going to like him. I don't know anybody who doesn't. He comes in, and he's not sexy. He's not super flashy, but he looks you in the eye. Uh, I don't think he has ever deceived anybody. Going back, talking to the people at Oregon State, uh, they were pissed because he left. But – you got to consider the situation, you know, this conference dissolves and where they're going to be. And, and Michigan State is an entire different stratosphere. But the way he's come in and the way he's built a staff, the way he's networked, starting here in the Midwest, but it's going to branch out a little bit. I see him as D'Antonio Plus. Really? D'Antonio Plus. Now, now on that, like, yeah, I can see that too. Straight, not a country. Now, D'Antonio wasn't that sexy. He's he not right. that cute. He, right. Yeah, yeah. I can see. So that's how you're looking at it, the the sexiness on the sexy meter. Yeah, he's he the told opposite of me. I'm sexy than a mother right now, Jack. I mean, right. there's there's Swerve, and then there's most Everybody of the rest, you know, and it just right. goes down from there. See, Jack, that's why I'm glad we need you on the show every week, Jack. The people <laughs> seem to forget sometimes. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I, mean, I just so, need some of Strayhorn's frequent flyer miles. That's all I. Oh need. man, hey, they all used up now, Jack. Man, I'm driving <laughs> now. I'm shoot. I'm hitchhiking the rest of these uh, the miles around here. <laughs> so, hey, if you're ever on I-75, look for the ball, big ball. That's it, right? I'll see it. Yeah. Okay, pick me up, please. You know, thinking about the D'Antonio style. Yeah. Cause you know, he he was a guy who was a you know a master at finding diamonds in the rough, developing the talent, and then you know getting those guys to stay five years and having them play a lot of you know developing them, and then then they get into those championship type programs that he produced over and over again as things started rolling for him. Yeah, with this he, new yeah college market, you know, we talk about the transfer portal and NIL. But is that possible to develop players and then be able to still keep them if, you know, other player, other schools try to poach players, as you see happen on a regular basis all the time, seemingly right now? 
it's gotten harder, you know, follow the money. Uh, that's what's behind most human interactions and decisions. But when you think about what D'Antonio did and how difficult that was, a lot of people have tried to do it that way. But uh, if you play poker, it's like drawn to an inside straight. It can be done, but the odds are not in your favor. And you look at the guys that Michigan State somehow got. I mean, Darquez Denard, he wins the Jim Thorpe Award. They didn't know who he was. They find him while they're recruiting someone else. Uh, Jack Conklin, who, for my money, sorry, Jason, the best no. offensive lineman I've ever seen at Michigan State. Ever? And yeah, Mandridge? Ever. Ever. Oh, yes. Because, because Tony couldn't that. pass block. Tony would tell you he couldn't pass block. But in those days, it didn't matter because George only threw it twice a game. But uh, in, in terms of being able to, and, and hey, you look where he was picked. I mean, he's the top big guy. He was a walk on. He came and begged for a uniform. Yeah. So when you look at, at uh, some of the things that worked in Michigan State's favor, I mean, BJ Cunningham, he's our all time leading receiver in terms of catches and yards and all those things. He's another guy. You know, you're talking two star, three star recruits, but. They were a developmental program, a lot like Wisconsin, a lot like Iowa. Yeah. And uh, they wind up putting guys in the pros and putting teams in the top ten. Mm. I mean, that's a good point. I mean, when Mark know. D'Antonio was hired, guys, the, yeah. the day he was hired, I did a, a interview with Channel 6 here in, in Lansing. And they asked me, what do you think of this guy? And uh, I've covered 13 13 Michigan State head football coaches now. And I said, you know, I think he'll be solid. I don't think he'll embarrass the university. He's not going to slap himself like one coach. But I, I think he's going to – yeah. You know, I, I said, I think he can average eight wins a year. If you had told me he was going to win 36 games in three years, I'd have bet my left leg. Yeah. And who would have thought that Michigan State – could win all those bowl games. They could beat Michigan seven out of eight. Who would have thought that they could be in the college football playoff? You know, all those things. And uh, you when guys know. Ball. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the year after you guys left, yeah. 99, that was only the second, second 10-win season in Michigan State history. It never won 11. Uh, they played fewer games going back. But yeah. it wasn't until 2010 with D'Antonio where they broke through and won 11 and won the Big Ten, and then they won 11 or more five times in six years. How do you do that? I mean, number one, how do you remember that? Because you have a mind like a steel trap, Jack. And people that don't know, not, now you know. If, if people don't know, you better ask somebody. Now you understand. I remember Jack what I want to remember. I, I can never remember to take out the garbage. <laughs> That's what you tell her, right? Yeah. Tell Mrs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you on that, Jack. I ain't taking that no garbage, especially when I got two kids. <laughs> Y'all take out the fucking garbage. <laughs> <laughs> and Coach D is very competitive with that Jim Tressel and Nick Saban background. Uh, yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, yeah you do remember everything, uh, yeah. as Trevor says here. You know, w when you look at the this season coming up for Michigan State football, yeah. Uh, what what do you see? Like the schedule doesn't look to be as difficult as it's been in the last few years. Uh, you know, looking at the talent that's available on the team on the roster right now, what do you think Michigan State can put together for this season? Putting in a new system with a new quarterback, there's some talented players. There's some players who are better than the players they had a year ago. I think the coaching staff is better than the staff they had a year ago. Yeah. Maybe the schedule, uh, it's not going to be favorable, but, but uh, you know, they were very close, as you know, Jason, yeah. to going 6-6 six and six last year. You look at the game they gave away at Rutgers. You look at the game they gave away at Iowa. Suddenly 4-8 and eight becomes 6-6 six and six and you're in a bowl. It wouldn't shock me if this team had a winning season, but I see it's going to grow. It's going to be steady progress. They're not going to look back. And uh, I think the future is bright. Mm. Just think about that, Swerve. Hey, Jack, I don't know if you can see that, but TJ Duggan just gave you a shout out, man. Oh, my man. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. say, Jack is the man. Thanks for all you do. 
You know, I, I think yeah, back to me. I didn't know if he was throwing up to you or I don't know. <laughs> I hope he's not throwing up to you. I guess he was giving you praises. That's what it is. Jason, yes. in, in these 45 years of me doing this, uh, I gotta tell you there's some indelible memories. And one of them, you know, is the first game against Purdue in 1996 when some guy oh! 33. How many touchdowns did he have, Jack? Four touchdowns in that game. And then <laughs> Uh, it's hard to find a better game than that win in Ohio State. And that no. guy who was sitting there, Neutron Man, at the end of the game, oh, could yeah. not leave the stadium. We oh, went down for all the that. interviews, came back. They had to use the jaws of life to get his ass out of that stadium. <laughs> I wasn't leaving, Jack. I was not leaving. And I took the grass with me, and I still got the He got grass. the grass from Yeah, him. I remember that. That's the best video on that. You grabbed uh, Larry Lage and I still laugh about you with that grass. And then oh. it, it was three years later, and TJ had the most amazing game against Michigan, 211 yards rushing, mm -hmm. and the touchdown catch. Looked like he was going to fair catch it. That ball was in the air so long. And then <laughs> finally caught it, and uh, the handshake, uh, Bobby Williams and Lloyd Carr did not like each other. Yeah. And Larry Foote uh, of Michigan – Slammed his helmet down on the, the turf. Sparks, I swear that thing went 10 feet up into the air. Uh, <laughs> highest I've ever seen a helmet bounce. But that was the smoker to duck it play. And people who were there, you know, they just love to rub that into the Wolverines. Oh, man. Yeah, they want to cry about the clock and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we got to get – so, Deith, where, where is Smoker at? Can we get Smoker on the show? Yeah, too? you can get Smoke on. He's in Grand Rapids area. Okay. Yeah, you can get yeah. him on. Yeah. yeah. We, we smoke and duck at the same time. How about yeah. that, Spur? We can do it. You know, if anybody can do it, we can do it. Right. You know what I told uh, Michigan fans about that clock incident, guys? Uh -huh. I said, you know, you've always had a hard time telling time. I think back to that Final Four game, which you can't even find anymore because it's been wiped out of the records. But, <laughs> uh, you know, you got to, they don't know how many timeouts they got. They don't know. You know, it's a little bit tough there. They're, Basic math is not an introductory course at U of M. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, Jack, I need your address because I'm looking in the back of you. And I see a, a helmet, this and this, but I don't see a picture of myself. And I got some I, I can send to you to make sure. You can put it like red, you know, take that San Francisco helmet out, put it up top, and then just put my picture right there. You send that to me, and it's done. It'll be there next week. Oh, done deal, oh, brother. Man. So, hey, so, so I want to ask something because you've been around, Jack. You know, give me the top five running backs, the top three running backs in MSU history. Oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> Make it fair. We we'll do five. Five. <laughs> well, you mentioned two of them, maybe right? How about Swerve and TJ? How about Lorenzo White? How about Kenneth Walker? Oh, he got to be in the discussion. Pretty right? good, pretty good. How about how about Clinton Jones? He averaged <laughs> about nine, nine carries a game, and he rushed for 268 yards against Iowa. There's so many. Michigan State has so many great running backs. Yeah, but it's just nice that you're hosting the show with one of them. <laughs> that's, bro, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> You know, J Jason, I got to tell you, when Michigan State played Miami a couple yeah. years ago down in Florida, yes. I had one of the best weeks I've had. A guy named Eric Drummond and I went down there, and we spent time with so many former players, including we went and saw Swerve the Junior down playing high school football. We went oh, to that yeah? game that Friday night. That was a trip, I got to tell you. That meant a lot, man, when I saw Jack walking out. It was like. So, oh, shit, come on, Jay. Give me a hug, baby. <laughs> that kept his word, man. He was right there watching my son play. Yes, he did. Oh, man. Yeah, you talking about Sid Jr., and then he's over at Stanford right now. Stanford, yeah. Yeah, part of the ACC. Can't believe all this stuff is going on. When you look at the landscape of college football now, what, your opinion matters to us, everybody, it should, because – you're seeing this, you know, conference expansion, and yeah. you know now you, you obviously saw the lawsuit from Florida State to the ACC. Now yeah. Clemson sued, ACC sues Clemson. What do you make of all this that's going on? 
Yeah, it's a mess. I mean, I don't know when they're going to get that cleaned up to allow those teams to move. But I call it PSOC, P-S-O-C, Pro Sports on Campus. I see. And I think the time is coming with unionization. Ooh. I don't think they'll ever have a draft where colleges can pick players. But I do think eventually they will be employees and there will be contracts. Mm-hmm. And that might provide some sanity. Players will get compensated fairly. But if you go into the NFL, Swerve, uh, midway through your rookie year, you can't leave and go somewhere else. Right. Right. You got a three-year contract, and then there's an option year. And maybe if the players get financially appreciated, then there'll be some stability in the game and say, well, yeah, you can transfer. You can transfer after your third year. And the exception to that would be if the coaches leave. Because right. then the guys who recruited you, you know, they don't, may not believe in you. They may not want you. The system could change. So so that would free you up. But it's kind of be a – loyalty has to be a two-way street. And right now, I think the fans are getting frustrated because they knew, Jason, uh, they watched you through your last game of your so- uh, senior year. That's right. Where they saw you for three years at Michigan State. They got guys now who go to a school – and if the school's on the quarter system, they could play in games, never go to a class, and wind up somewhere else. That's crazy. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, you yeah, got guys who get the bag at Ohio State, and then they wind up playing for Texas. <laughs> this is true. True. I mean, so, you're seeing that. Like, like, I mean, like we just we talked about a little bit, I think, before you got on the show. You have a kid from, you know, uh, Iowa that flipped at the last minute to go to Alabama. He was disgruntled, I guess. You know, they said he was going to be transferring before Nick Saban yeah. retired. Nick Saban retires. He goes to Iowa, and he's been in Iowa for maybe – I don't even know. I mean, he hasn't been there that long. I don't think it's been 90 days yet. And he's already going back in the, in the portal to come back go back to Alabama? Yeah. Like, how can you yo-yo like that? That's like the emotions of every college football player. Swear, think about all the players that we've seen when you came in as freshmen and the emotional roller coaster that you go through as, as you're developing from, like you talked about, a young man to a man. If you could just disappear when you felt that way instead of having to go through those rough nights and try to dig deep and figure out how to come back a better person the next day and do what the coaches ask you to do. Like what would the game have been like for us if we had these options? I mean, for one, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have a, 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 a team. It wouldn't be a team. If you can, if you can do that, if you can just get up and just go like that, you know, cause other, other players are watching that. Yeah, they are. You know, and, and that's when it's going to become a problem when you get so many many players doing that at, at one time. You know, because if that guy did it, what, what was the reason why I can't do it? You well, know? They talked then, about a you know, guy I mean, today, guys, in the NCAA tournament playing for his fourth school. And it's gotten to the point where coaches, you know, to keep their jobs, uh, they're going through the handshake line. Uh, saying, you know what, you look awful good in this uniform. And there are staffs, believe it or not, who have coaches. Their job now is to poach the portal, get guys to come in. It's a meat market. And that's not fair to the players either. No. No, it's not fair. And then it also, you know, the portal also is stopping high school recruiting. You know, I I don't spoke to some coaches that told me, hey, no, my head coach, he just want to get. He just want to get players out of the out of the portal. He don't want to do no high school recruit. We come out, we show our face, but you know, we we just we gonna get we gonna get. Matter of fact, if it was twenty eight scholarship, he said, yeah, we gonna get twenty two out of the portal. Hmm. Wow. So it's like if you get twenty two out of the portal and you're a top twenty school, when this guy told me this, that that's hurting twenty two high school kids that could have had a scholarship. I also wonder, guys, you know, everybody wants the money. I get it. But there are lessons that you learn through hard work, through achieving something where you don't just have everything handed to you and you appreciate things that are going to help you later in life. Swerve, I think you learned enough stuff playing for Nick Saban that served you well. And Jason, same with you. It wasn't always easy. It wasn't always fun. 
but you couldn't have a bad practice and say, uh, that's it, I'm going to Miami. I mean, you, you had to, to finish the job, and you usually came out better for it. Now, you know, guys transfer, I get it, but uh, it shouldn't be as easy as it is for guys now. Who have, If they have two bad practices in a row, they're gone. Yeah, yeah. The coach is kind of riding you, you know, pushing you. And see, Sad never had to deal with this. Let's just be real. He never did. He came in on a cloud. He was put on a pedestal. He was the, the, the teacher. What do you call it? He was saving son. That's what we always said. You saving know. son. Yeah. He was saving son. He could, you know, he was the original Stephen Izzo, but he could, you know, he could, he could, he could, he could ball too. You know what I mean? <laughs> By the way. When did you decide to make the upgrade from J.U. Colcrick to Swerve? <laughs> hey, hey, we didn't decide nothing, man. J.U. just busy doing – J.U.'s doing speaking engagement. He didn't graduate. Oh, no. He's busy. I love J.U. Yeah. Yeah, but if you say it's an upgrade, that's a hey, Swerve. You heard that? You ever been on a plane? You ever been on a plane? Yeah. yeah. They got certain seats in the plane, right? They got comfort. Comfort. They got those in the back, and then they got to upgrade to first class. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Why not be first class? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Right? They, yeah, you know that's 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 extremely funny. Element. Steve Smith, you talking about? That's a little shout out to oh, uh, Otis. He used to say element a lot. So element, element, yeah, element, yeah. element of the element of. Hey, there were some things that Nick said all the time, you guys. You, I you remember you could imitate him. <laughs> Shit. A lot of them are expletives. Nothing but. That's all you can say. Hey, can you give us a Nick impression, impersonation? Swerve, can you do that? Who? Me? Yeah. Nah, I'm not, not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do like, Jesus like that. Might Jesus. find its way to Jupiter. Uh, you never I'm, know. I'm gonna, let, I'm gonna let Jesus stay with his with his golf shorts, with his boat. You know, I'm gonna let Jesus ride in the sunset. I'm, I'm gonna let him go, man. All yeah. I can tell you, Swerve is when uh, Nick announced uh, he was leaving, or told the team he was leaving. And uh, I, if Plesco Burris could have got to him, he'd have punched his lights out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he they went upset. down and won the bowl game anyway with Bobby. Yeah. Yeah. They did. We know a lot of those players that was on that team because we were gone. Yeah. And then, you know, they, they had said that Saban told them that they, he wasn't leaving and have your ass to practice the next day. Yeah. yeah. And then that night, he was gone. But wasn't that Peter McPherson? That, that's that, as we as time has gone on and you've been able to understand what yeah. happened in those moments. Yeah. Was that Nick Lyon or was there something going on with the president at the time? Well, uh, Peter McPherson was the president, and he and Nick didn't see eye to eye. and uh, There was no trust whatsoever. And he went in and he wanted uh, additional compensation because they just, you know, had a great season. They had beaten Oregon, Notre Dame, Michigan, Ohio State, and Penn State in the same year. Damn. Yeah. And they were going to get ready to beat Florida. That was the next one. Yeah. So he went in and. McPherson thought, well, you know, the big thing is winning bowl games. This guy didn't win a bowl game yet. He said, basically, go win a bowl game, come in and see me. And Nick was furious, and his agent started looking around a little bit and said, hey, you know what? LSU is interested in you. And uh, so Nick said, okay, that's the deal. They don't appreciate me here. But he was on his way down there, and he realized he'd made a mistake. And he called Joel Ferguson. He said, I want to come back. They couldn't get a hold of McPherson, and it was too late. It would have undone the whole deal. Now, I don't think he would have stayed at Michigan State for another decade, but I think he would have stayed a couple more years, and things wouldn't have uh, evolved quite the way they did. Mm. That's interesting. Never heard that story. Wow. He also flew a plane up here to get all of his assistant coaches. That plane came back empty. I heard, I heard that. that story. Yeah. 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 Yeah, have your ass on the plane or it's going to leave. And they all stay. And that's where Bobby Williams ends up getting a job and everybody yeah. stayed, right? For one Mark more year. Antonio stayed and then uh, went to Ohio State and winds up coming back here uh, six years later. <laughs> I mean, an incredible turn of events. I couldn't write this script. I, I, I couldn't write this stuff. <laughs> True. But we want you to write it because we got a 
memorialize all this information, man. This is great stuff. Jack, it was absolutely a pleasure having you on the show. Man, don't be a stranger. I know, look, we'll be on the drive with Jack. We love having Got you that on right. the MSU. You know, don't be a stranger, man, and, and please come back soon. Thanks a lot, guys. All right. My hey, man, Jack. My man. <laughs> Jack Ebling. Man, that's that that right there, you know. Think about it, guys. That classic. is that is a classy, classic, just gem of a human being right there. And he knows all he knows everything Michigan State's were. He even gave you your props. That means he really knows what's going on. I mean, it, it, it's not hard not giving me my props, first of all. I mean, you know, I mean, come on. Give credit what credit's due. But man. When, when Jack has so much knowledge to go back to the 60s, the 50s, and can tell you this story and that story, I would have loved to sit by him in English class. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> English, history, jocks. Was it rocks for jocks? All the classes, right? Come on, Jack. Don't cover your paper up, brother. Come on, man. Just, just, let, just let me get a two-point, man. That's all I want to do. <laughs> Let me get a two point, man. That was outstanding, man. Look, look, the Spartans, man. We got to make sure everybody is in position to get ready to cheer on those Spartans in basketball coming up here this weekend on Saturday against North Carolina. And the Spartan women are playing. Look, there's a lot of stuff going on in Michigan State, and we got to continue to ride the wave, man. Swear, you got any final thoughts before we get out of here for the weekend? Go green, go white. Yes, sir. Uh Yes, sir. Hey, let me tell you something. Straight be throwing strays at 437. That ain't me. That, that's you. Hey, for Cedric Swerving Irvin, I'm Jason Strayhorn. This is part of MSU. Everybody have a good night. God bless you all. And go green. Go white.